after the mystery and pain of the Pentium 4 videos, we gonna do something way, way cooler. We gonna go back to MS DOS and this build, which I built 10 years ago. This video is sponsored by my long term sponsor PCBWay. If you want your circuit boards designed, realized, and printed, you should check out PCBWay. Starting prices as low as $5 for a one or two layer design. Check the top banner for the current promotions. Place your order now, links in the description. PCBWay has a special offer. Check out a 9th anniversary promotion for free coupons. Special link down in the description. Hi, my name is Victor Bart. Welcome to Retro Machines and let's go back in time with the MS-DOS Time Machine. It's a concept by Phil's Computer Lab which I made 10 years ago and it has absolutely awesome hardware. I already had some cool stuff back in the days and I turned it on and it directly booted up without any errors. Yeah, the BIOS battery is empty. So that is standard by every system. So we're gonna upgrade the CPU today and I have plans to maybe install a Windows on it but more on that later but probably not in this video but we're gonna prepare it. And I already started up my dual Xeon workstation to prepare a zip disk. The magic 100 megabyte disk <laughs> that is just awesome. Zip drives and disks are insanely awesome and I think it's the best thing out of the 90s. So let's uh, load a zip disk up and I don't run the drivers in the auto execute but I don't need always zip drive so I always load the drivers by hand. So it's now finding a drive letter for the Emega drive. Zip 100 drive letter E. So let's use not the commander. I'm not sure why the screen is giving a uh, black screen uh, sometimes. Like now. Not sure what's wrong. But let's copy some uh, Windows 3.11 to the hard drive. This will probably take some time. This around 10 megabyte or 11. And if I install Windows 3.11 I don't need to uh, use the floppies and uh, disk 7, 8 uh, so I don't need to have 8 floppies to install it. So that makes my life much easier probably. Let's copy the DOS benchmark tools from Phil's computer lab to the hard drive. You can download them on his website. And also this will take some time so uh, let's come back when it's all uh, copied to the hard drive. The DOS benchmark tools are copied. So uh, let's run some DOS benchmarks on the Pentium 166 that's currently in. This chip is without MMX and you can see it's from the Intel Pentium family where there's a 100 to 200 megahertz CPU and it's running on 168.4 megahertz and a real Intel CPU. So uh, let's first do a Quake uh, time demo. We have 41 frames per second and let's run it in 640 by 480 and this all uh, on software mode not on the 3 d fix voodoo. We have 14.2 frames per second. So a terrible result. And let's run the Chris's 3D benchmark. 126 frames per second. And the PC player benchmark. And we have a score of 44.8. And let's run the PC player benchmark at 640 by 480. And we have a score of 18.6. What I want to upgrade on this machine is the CPU. It's now a Pentium without MMX. And when I was building this machine I was thinking that would be fine, it's MS-DOS. Who needs MMX? But then I put it by awesome retro and retro gaming space where everyone was allowed to install software on this machine and do what they want. 
and then software and games appeared on this machine and one of them needed MMX. So yeah, now I need to upgrade to an MMX CPU to run that software and that software is pretty cool. Let me show you if I can still find it. So let's go to the games directory and it's not a game. Uh, let's see where it is. Oh no, here it is. Demos. Uh, my friend uh, Stitch installed uh, two demos on this machine. So one of them didn't run I think. So let's see if they will run. Sound Blaster Pro. Oh yeah, Sound Blaster Pro. Sound quality high. The second reality demo is really cool and it's made in 1993. It was just amazing back in the days that this could run on PC hardware. So I will put the Wikipedia link down in the description if you want to know more about this. The second demo that is on the machine is the H7 Final, the Heaven 7D demo. MMX instruction required hmm we need to upgrade the CPU to run this demo thanks Stitch for putting this on the machine so I could upgrade this machine and have a reason to put a newer CPU in it before the CPU upgrade let's talk about the hardware and this build is I think in my top three of favorite builds that I ever made it's just perfection on every level in my opinion for my experience of MS-DOS because you have like the Sound Blaster uh, fans like me and you have the Kravis Ultrasound fans like other people and yeah this is Sound Blaster so sorry for the Kravis Ultrasound fans <laughs> so this uh, system has a uh, maker display here which goes up to 199 turbo button but on this uh, board it doesn't really work here's the reset button and the reset button has a hidden feature when you hold it you can set the maker to display with it so the power button here turbo led hard drive led power led and now the awesome function of this uh, box that is this door <laughs> it has an, an amazing door in front of the drive base I have a second case of this uh, design and that's even more insane. That has a rocker switch here and a motor that drives up and down this door in front of the drive base. But my Pentium Pro built is in it. So yeah, this is just the basic version but it's already cool. But it needs a, probably a little bit of a crease so it goes smoother. So normally I put the CD-ROM player on top and I'm not sure why I didn't do it in this machine but I think it is fine as it is. The CD-ROM drive is from Philips, a nice Dutch brand. I think it's like a 20 speed or something, not sure. Here we have a 5.25 uh, inch uh, floppy drive. 
1.2 megabyte. To be honest, it's in, but I almost never use it. But it looks cool. The only thing is I had to mount it like three millimeters uh, to the rear, otherwise the door won't fit. <laughs> then we have the standard 1.44 floppy drive. That is uh, what you need in MS-DOS build. Here we have a 100 megabyte EDA uh, zip drive. It's just amazing to have this in your DOS box to transfer files. In the future I will uh, put networking on this system so you, I can transfer files over the network. But for MS-DOS having a zip drive to transfer 100 megabyte as in time is just very nice to have and it works very well. This AT case has a really good layout with a lot of possibilities. We have four five and a quarter inch uh, drive base, but only three are usable from the front and the upper one is not really usable because it's also blocked by the front I.O. Uh, stuff. But if you would run a quantum Bigfoot you can fit it here. Then we have two external 3.5 inch uh, drive base for the floppy drive and the zip drive. Here a 3.5 inch hard drive uh, bay. And here an additional 3 hard drive base for 3.5 inch hard drives. So you can put a lot of hard drives in it and it's still a MIDI tower. That makes this amazing. I put the front uh, panels here so I don't lose them by this case. And I'm not sure what the brand of the power supply was but it's probably like a 200 watt unit. Which is fine for a machine like this. Let's talk about the amazing combination of expansion cards. We have a Matrix Mystique 8 megabyte. Normally you find them in 2 megabyte. This is also a 2 megabyte card. But it has the 6 megabyte upgrade module. Which is very hard to find but I had one. I already bought it in like 1999 or 2000. Very cool card. And under it is a Fudu 1 from uh, Diamond Multimedia. So 4 megabyte Fudu 1. It's for the games like Tomb Raider and stuff like that. But I disconnected the pass through cable for now. Because the Fudu 1 was giving the black screens earlier in this video. 3 ISA cards and we have 3 ISA slots on this motherboard. So every ISA slot is filled. And that makes a build so much cooler. So this is a 3Com8 Link 3. It's a 10 uh, megabit network card with coax and UTP and this is just an amazing card a very good compatibility with operating systems and later I will put this system in a network using this network card and under it is a Roland MPU uh, sound card or MIDI card and it's used to drive the Roland MT32 and this is just an amazing card also very hard to find, very rare. And as normal sound card we have an AWA 32 with memory upgrade. So we have, I think this is maybe just two 1 megabyte sticks in 30 pin uh, SIM holders. If you want to run more uh, MIDI sounds you can do it and load it in. And this is a Sound Blaster CT3980. And the card is very long, so it is sacking down and the cards don't break uh, of that. Uh, maybe if you bring it too much through LAN parties. So I try to hold it up with a like, paper bracket which didn't hold, so I need to put a better bracket in. And also here the cable to the CD-ROM player is in. And this setup is just wonderful. I wouldn't have any other card that I really need to add to this combination of cards. It is just complete. And here we have an original Cooler Master CPU cooler with the Pentium 166 under it. And up here we have a 16 megabyte uh, SD RAM stick because we have two 186 pin uh, SD RAM banks and 472 pin uh, banks but 60 megabyte is more than enough and Phil from Phil's computer lab also says for DOS less memory is better so try to get as less memory as possible if you want to run MS-DOS and like Windows 3.11 
even Windows 95 with 16 megabyte will run. Maybe you can upgrade it then to 32 megabyte, but that is uh, probably enough to run everything you want. I forget what the brand of this motherboard was, but the chipset is a 430 uh, TX chipset, so that is the latest. A Pentium chip from uh, Intel. It supports up to 64 megabytes of memory uh, if your memory is cached. It has 512 kilobytes of cache on board and it's just a very solid motherboard with four PCI slots and three ISA slots. Power supply has a pass through for the monitor that was really common back in the days with AT systems. We have two COM ports, one 9 pin for the mouse and one 25 pin. We have a parallel port, we have an AT keyboard with a big plug and we have also a PS2 port for the mouse, the bracket is in but I don't uh, really use it. Here we have the Matrox video card with VGA and a special Matrox connector. The Voodoo but I removed the pass through cable so you can see it better. The 3Com network card with the coax, UTP and the multi connector. Here we have the Roland MIDI output. And on here goes a cable to an uh, external box where you plug in the MT32. And here the AW32 with the game port and it has line out, speaker out, mic in and line in. Only the speaker out is now red instead of black. Because this uh, sound card had a broken connector and I think 10 years ago in the hackerspace in Amersfoort. Uh, I uh, asked for help and we repaired this uh, sound card with the help of I think we used a Sound Blaster PCI 128 to get this connector from. And I think it looks really cool that this connector is red. So we need a CPU. And here are my racks with uh, Intel uh, Pentium chips. We have two 120s, two 133s, one 66 this is without MMX so this is the old style and this is the newer style with MMX and we have four 200 megahertz MMX CPUs and three 233 uh, megahertz CPUs this uh, we don't need but we need this to store the CPU that comes out of this machine and here we can select a CPU to use Let's see the steppings. This is an ASL27S. Don't drop CPUs. <laughs> this is also an SL27S. And also this one is. Let's uh, just use this CPU in the system. And the reason why I check the steppings is if I would make a dual Pentium system, you need matching steppings. So then you can better put the stepping that you have only one of in a single system. And we have a BIOS battery so uh, I also gonna swap that. Let's swap the CPU and I hope that I don't have to upgrade the BIOS. So let's open the clip. Remove the CPU cooler. And as you can see there's no thermal paste on the CPU because with Pentiums it's not really needed. It is okay to use but it's not necessary. So Pentium 166 and the stepping is an SI016. Take the Pentium 233 MMX, drop it in and this is a super simple upgrade. Lower the handle. Let's use a little bit of Noctua thermal paste. Just a tiny bit, more than enough. Take the CPU cooler, line it up, smear out the thermal paste a little bit because this is not a high pressure cooler. And then click in the bracket, hook it in, flip it. And now the CPU is installed. Really simple. So the 166 can go back in the collection. And I always like to write on the CPU what it is so I can easily see it. And we gonna write on MS-DOS time machine. So we know this CPU comes out of this machine. So if I want to 
put this back in the future I can find it back. Pentium MMX CPU at 100 MHz. A new CPU installed, press Dell to enter setup. This BIOS I really love. It's super simple and it just works. So we have a lot of things to set up, but we don't have to set up that much because the standard configuration is pretty decent. And we have a speed easy CPU setup. So let's go to jumper emulation and we have a 66 mega frontside bus and the CPU multiplier is now on 2 times but that needs to be on uh, 3.5 times but not all motherboards support 3.5 let's see if this board supports it oh it supports 3.5 that's good so this is a really late uh, model motherboard where the CPU was already out probably so we can choose between 2, 3.5, 2.5 and 3. So let's put on 3.5. If your motherboard doesn't support 3.5 multiplier, try to set it up to 1.5x multiplier. Because that is the hidden trick with the 233 MMX. Then it also works like 3.5. But this motherboard already detected it that this uh, is 3.5 save and exit setup Pentium MMX 233 oh and I didn't tell the hard drive is in 2 uh, gigabyte uh, version digital the CPU is running at 235 uh, MHz Quake 1 is now running at 52 uh, frames per second instead of 41 so that's like a 20% upgrade. And by 640 by 418 it's now 16.7 over 14.2. So not a big upgrade uh, with a higher resolution. The Chris 3D benchmark is now 164 frames per second over 125 and PC player benchmark is now running at 58.7 frames per second over 44.8 and PC player at 640 by 480 is now running at 22.5 frames per second over 18.6 the CPU benchmark show that this CPU is like 20% faster the 233 MMX is just a really good CPU, but also the 166 without MMX is pretty solid for MS-DOS. Let's now start the demo that was the reason for the CPU upgrade. The demo ran, but I didn't hear any sound and was only in this screen and it can run at higher resolutions, but then it's not loading. So the demo is not really working yet, but at least it detected an MMX CPU. This demo was 64 kilobyte, made in 1997. It was really impressive what they could achieve with this kind of hardware and limitations. I couldn't wait, I had to plug in the MT32. Maybe the demo uh, gives sound through the MT32, I don't know. But first, Monkey Island! This is the best song of Monkey Island 2.
I think the reason why the Heaven 7 demo didn't have sound is that my AB32 is not in the standard setting but a little bit different settings because of the MT32 card taking up certain resources so then it's probably programmed in that it just uses the default sound blaster uh, sound uh, channels and and resources but that doesn't match so I don't think I gonna run that demo on this machine with sound in my next video I will install Windows 3.11 on this machine and install the network card so I can go onto the internet with Windows 3.11 and probably transfer some files I never use Windows 3.11 with networking so that will be a new experience and what else should I change or upgrade on this configuration what IDs do you have to change this machine and of course one of the things I will get comments on is not using a CRT monitor my CRT monitors are up there but I really love this NeoView monitor for DOS and and just it's a 1024 by 786 monitor and also to film this monitor it just works and with the CRT that's more difficult so that's why I choose this to show in these videos but what else should I change up in this machine or add or I think I have one PCI slot uh, left over so yeah not much room for improvements and I don't think SCSI will be an upgrade for this machine but if you have ideas let me know in the comments and if you like to support me you can support me monthly on Patreon and get access to my awesome Discord server or use my Amazon affiliated links and thanks for watching check out the PCBWay 9th anniversary promotion with a lot of free coupons the special link will be in the description